Hello everyone, Drake Bitch here, and today I want to go over all the news that's been surrounding Helldivers 2 lately. So we, I was expecting a patch on Tuesday, but they said that uh, they wanted to slow the pace down. Because we feel a slightly lower cadence overall will benefit both us, you, and the game. So they're going to slow down and have faster putting out the patches so that they can make sure they're a little bit better before they come out. I think this is a good thing overall. And hopefully they do some really good changes and we see some people coming back and things are a little bit better with Helldivers. Now we have a lot of things to cover so I'm going to move on to the next topic where we're talking about how there's a new CEO taking over for Johan Pildstid. I hope I said that right. And he's the one that everybody likes. So, but... Don't worry, he's not leaving the company. He's taking a new role as creative director. Uh, he said that on Twitter today, so if we click here. He said, big update, I've decided to hire Shams Jord Georgiani as the new CEO of Arrowhead. We go way back and I wouldn't trust the business in any other hands. And he comes with an impressive resume and a love for games. What about me and my involvement in Helldivers 2? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm taking the role of Chief Creative Officer, which means I will spend more time with the team and 100% of my focus on the games and the community. So I'm hoping this is going to be a good change. I uh, looked into this guy, and according to his LinkedIn, he said that my track record includes 12 years at Paradox Interactive, whereof six years in charge and part of portfolio and senior management. During these years, I had a major role in leading the company from 23 to 800 plus people, an IPO and several critically acclaimed titles. So on Wikipedia, I looked it up. He has put like Paradox itself, the company has published for Arrowhead Game Studios before. So they have worked together before. And Paradox, I don't know what 12 years this guy worked for Paradox, but Paradox is known for Vampire Masquerade Bloodlines, uh, Pillars of Eternity, uh, all these games you see here, Mountain Blade Warband. These are just some of the ones that I know. I'm sure there's more here. But you can see that they published a lot of games. So this could be a good. And with the slowdown in the pace, and with the CEO helping develop the game, this can make it a lot better. Now, there's this article too that came out this morning. It said, Helldivers 2 Dev says it's seen a horrifying amount of threats and rude behavior from some in the community. The more voices being added to the choir does add complexity. So, let's see. The big difference now, which is horrifying, is the amount of threats and rude behavior that people in the studio are getting from some really shitty individuals within the community, Piltstead said. Sir, Piltstead told Games Industry Biz. That's something new we have to deal with. When Helldivers 2 launched, it faced significant server issues that made the game unplayable for many, sparking an initial backlash. But since then, the issue was largely resolved. Arrowhead has faced complaints about everything from weapon balance to low impact premium war bonds. But by far the biggest backlash was sparked by Sony's controversial decision to force PC gamers to link to PlayStation Network account to play. Sony eventually reversed its decision, but not before a review bombing campaign savaged Helldivers 2 on Steam. So I've already talked about that in my other video. So, uh... The new CEO said, Arrowhead's philosophy has always been a game for everyone is a game for no one. That is a company slogan. It's how our games are designed. You can feel it in every feature. I think it's one of the big reasons that Helldivers 2 has been so successful. It feels fresh because it does a lot of unpopular stuff. When you hit this big, much bigger than anyone thought, Sony, us, everyone, what happens is the game finds an audience outside of that niche fan group. So get this application of different voices. Almost all games have a bit of camp of toxicity in the community, but with these big numbers, you just get so many. So we need to work with the community to get them to self-moderate, give people the tools to speak with each other in a positive fashion so we can keep talking to the players openly. 
more voices being added to the choir does add complexity. I don't really like that take. I mean, he I, he probably wasn't here paying attention to most of it, but a lot of it was caused by the community matter, moderators and the way that they managed managed the community. Like they were censoring people. They were, you know, I get I get you shouldn't be doxing people and you shouldn't be death threatening and you shouldn't be you know all that stuff. But the reason they're getting death threats and stuff is not just that stuff. It's also because of all the woke stuff that they said on Twitter about players that they're not even reporting in this article. Like, there's a lot of stuff that that, that was said that really went against, the, like, the people on the right side of the spectrum. Which is a lot of people, obviously, right? You know, that's like 50% of the population. So, if you're going to, like, ostracize 50% of the population, you better expect some blowback. And if he can't see that as a CEO, it's not going to go good for him either. But we'll see. I'm willing to give anyone a chance. I'm not a dick. But I am one of the people who's censored. I am one of the people who's moderated. And I am one of the people who's not allowed to even voice my opinion anymore. So, that being said, that's all for today. And um, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.